Would you rather have this 40 watt laser diode or this little 1.6 watt laser diode. And if you want just the most power possible, 40 watts is about the maximum you can get for a diode laser. But there's a lot of cases when the smaller 1.6 watt laser modules can actually be really useful for you. In this video, we are going to talk about the use cases where you might use one of these, the use cases you might use one of these, and what in the world is this guy. So this is the Creality Falcon 2 Pro, and this entire video is sponsored by Creality. So this is not a formal review of this machine, but I am gonna walk through a lot of its features to kind of show off what it can do, as well as tell you some of the things that I really like about it. But I also would encourage you guys to check out other videos about this machine as well, once you watch this one. Okay, so let's talk about this guy first before we talk about the different laser modules you can get. So first, this is from Creality. You might be familiar with them on the 3D printer side of things. They have the really popular Budget Ender series, as well as the K1, K1 Max, as well as a whole line of resin printers. Creality has been around for a while, making these tools that you use along with digital manufacturing. But this isn't the first one they have done. They had some smaller wattages back in the day, but last year they came out with the Creality Falcon 2. And that is this guy right here, which I did a review of of before. Overall, my thoughts on this machine were that it was great. This is a great option to the really popular X-Tool D1 series, but it still had one big drawback. In fact, that it was an open gantry design, meaning all the light, all the dust, all the fumes was going to come out, and that's not great. So basically, manufacturers have seen this, and they have quickly started to enclose their machines. They started out giving you retrofit enclosures that you could put with it, but now they have started to integrate it into the machine itself. And that is pretty much what we have right here. So the frame pretty much still is the original Creality Falcon 2, uh, but you have a lot more built around it, including this top enclosure, which doesn't have like a normal lid that opens and closes, but it has the sliding lid. And honestly, when I was first putting this together, I was a little surprised this wasn't just a normal lid. But the more I've been using it, uh, I like the fact that this slides, especially if you are in a workspace where you don't have a lot of room. So like maybe you want to put this on a desk with like cabinet above it. I know with some of my CO2 machines, I know when I open that lid, I'm basically butting up into the top of the cabinet. Um, so this doesn't take up any additional foot space or I guess air space that those other machines have. And then another thing that enclosure allowed them to do was include a camera, uh, which is right here. And you have a USB camera port that is coming out the end. Then you can connect that directly to your computer, which you then can pull into Lightburn and get a preview of what is actually in your workspace. That's always really handy if you're trying to engrave something directly onto material itself. You can kind of see how things are positioned. But then what I like to use it the most is probably when I cut things out of material and I still want to cut something else from the scraps that I've already got. Now they also include this pull-out tray, uh, which is actually massive all the way out. And this one you can fully remove from the machine itself. And so uh, you can see I already got a lot of dust and crap on it. Really easy to take this out, dump it into the trash can, and you're good to go. And things are able to slide through because you have an open bed, but it's not a straight honeycomb bed. They're actually using this like blade rail system that is really popular with CO2 machines. And there's a lot of slots on both sides. So you can kind of put them in wherever you need them. And this whole tray is basically the front of this base. So if you're just looking at the standard Creality 2, um, basically you have some feet underneath this bottom right here, but that's been extended down several inches to give you more room on the bottom, which also gives you a little bit more play on the Z axis. Since you can take those slots out, it's really easy to put thicker material inside. And then this is adjustable. You got a couple screws on the side to where you can pull up and down your laser module for engraving. And then this enclosure also has a light bar. Uh, that is what this is right here. And so you can kind of see the light pointing in at my hand. So you pretty much never had lights on those open gantry style machines. So that's something great that adds on to it as well. And then you You've got a fan right here in the back because now you can actually duct out your exhaust and your fumes and they give you tubing so then you can run it either into a like smoke and fume extractor or if you're just like me you might just run it out of a window or an open garage door. Another thing I kind of glossed over with the whole point of having an enclosure in addition to having the fumes and the exhaust being able to pour out of a single spot so it's just not open air stinking up and smoking up everything that you have inside of your workshop and you're protected from the visible light that is coming out of this diode. 
mode. So all of these are like tinted polycarbonate panels. Uh, you got thicker ones on the side um, because this one's having to go over a curve. So it's a lot thinner to make it more flexible. And just like with the non-pro version of this machine, you also get a air assist. And so you get this pump here on the back. You actually plug the hose right here, which gets routed through the machine all the way down into the laser module itself. Uh, Creality does a really nice job because they give you the option of controlling the pressure of the air as it's coming out. So you can go high or low. And it's kind of on this rolling dial. So you literally can dial it in to what you want to use it for. Uh, and especially with engraving, you might want a little bit of air assist slash no air assist to give you a cleaner image. And then if you're cutting something out, you're gonna wanna turn this up. So you're getting the cleanest cut and safest cut possible. And speaking of safety, this has pretty much your standard suite of features. The main one being these three indicators on the laser module itself. This is something I really liked on the non-pro version of this machine, and they have brought it over to this one as well. But you can see it has an air, fire, and lens indicator. Air is blinking red right now because there is no air going through the machine. And the compressor is actually plugged into the machine itself, and then you can control it through the software. So it will not run until it knows that it has has air going through or that you've told it to not do any air whatsoever, depending on what you're cutting out. That's nice because that's definitely something I forgot with open gantry style machines in the past where you just manually had to turn it on. Having it all integrated is great. And then you actually have an indication that it's working. The other part is this fire sensor. And I think it's like an infrared sensor. Uh, and actually I have had mine turn on a couple times uh, when I was running this 40 watt module at full power uh, with not much air assist to kind of see what would happen on the safety side. And it does an excellent job. And the last one is this lens sensor. And I believe that's just testing uh, that you still have a clean lens. So all of that laser power is going where it should instead of staying inside of the module itself. And then something you don't get even with fully enclosed CO2 machines is the fact that you can see pretty much 360 around the machine to what you are working on. So it's been pretty surprising how useful it is to be able to see inside of the machine, like regardless of where I am in relation to it. So even just being able to see from the back is handy when I am doing other stuff inside of the shop. And always on the safety side of things, even though this has some great sensors and safety mechanisms, you never want to leave one of these machines running by itself because it's still a laser which still can catch on fire which can spread really quick. And then on the physical control side of things, pretty much the same as the non-pro version, um, you have the ability to jog the machine right here. Um, you can home the machine, so it will bring it to the front left corner. Uh, that's really handy if you're having to do repeat cuts and for whatever reason, maybe you lose power or something messes up, it can go back to its home location and then go back to wherever it was in your design or workpiece. You can also hit this frame button, which will turn the laser to a really low power and it'll just trace an outline of what this is going to cut out. So even though it has a camera to position, I find that framing is always going to be the most exact. And usually it's pretty quick to get it dialed in. You can connect to it over USB and it also has an SD slot to where you can load your designs directly to the machine itself. But none of that gets to why would you want to replace this massive 40 watt laser diode with a 1.6 watt diode. And honestly, this kind of brings back some nostalgia because when I first started doing these reviews, uh, this was like the max power that you could get. Uh, and it was just amazing that you could have a laser inside of your house to do anything. And it is crazy just how over a few years, how quickly we've come to something as big as this 40 watt guy. And I do want to say 40 watts isn't your only option with this machine itself. Uh, you can also get a 22 watt option that's going to be a little bit cheaper. But when you get the 40 watt, you also get this because as you step up in wattage, you're also gonna step up in the beam size of the laser itself. So like how big that laser dot is while it's engraving. And that's totally fine if you're gonna be cutting things out. There's even ways to take into account inside of the software, the kerf, or like basically the size of the dot um, so that you know whatever you're cutting out is exactly what you want. But when you're engraving, so like if you're doing logos or text or even like grayscale pictures, a bigger laser dot basically means you're going from like a really fine point pencil or pen uh, to something big and fat like like a Sharpie. So having this 40 watt module kind of gives you the problem of like, what do you do if you want to do those picture or text engravings? You still definitely can engrave text, but if you want to get the finest details possible, for the most part, as you step back down in wattage, you also are going to step down in the size of the laser dot itself. And pretty much like all the machines I check out, I always run it through a series of tests. It's usually with this test file right here, but I also do like a cutting point test file as well, because I'm always trying to get the best result 
as fast as possible. But I do find with engraving, it's even more important to test out whatever you're working on on materials. And this like testing process as well, some of these test files, I've got for you if you want to check out, there's a link down in the description. You're gonna have to use Lightburn, which is my favorite piece of software, but then you can just open it up and run it. And then you get an idea of what's gonna be the best result for you. But with this 40 watt, I ran my test engraving, but I like to use a sample picture at a bunch of different power as well as speed settings. But just as a means of comparison, I also threw on the 1.6 watt. And so that is this one down here. And then the 40 watt is right up here. Now this one is a lot more fine. I ran both of these at 500 dots per inch. But again, the actual size of those dots is going to vary because of the wattage. But on the pros for the 40 watt, it is much much faster. So I'm running this at 500 millimeters per second at 50% power versus the 1.6 watt, which is only at 40 millimeters per second at 90% power. But you can see I am getting a much nicer result. So it definitely is a balancing act between the two. There might be some jobs that you're doing where the engraving still is going to work even at that larger dot size. So you can use the higher power module and run it a lot faster to get through a lot more jobs. But you might have something that is super fine. And so with the 40 watt, they're going to give you this guy as well. And these are not hard whatsoever to change out. There is literally one power plug uh, right here. It connects right here on the end of the gantry that the laser is connected to. Now on the accessory side of things, uh, Creality also has an air purifier. So if you just wanted to run this directly into a unit, you can also have a rotary with this unit as well. So you can do things that are rolling and round. And then they even have an extension kit to where you can lift this up even higher off the ground if you're working with really, really thick material. And the work area on this is like one of the biggest of pretty much any of these type of machines. It's 400 by 450 millimeters, which is like 15 and three quarters by 14 and a third inches. Oh, and one other safety feature, since this has a lid, it also has a lid sensor. So this will not run as soon as you open this up. So that will kill power to the laser diode. The machine itself will still stay on. So like as soon as you shut it, you can hit play or go and it's gonna keep going as well. Now this is pretty much a brand new machine. It may not even be officially out at the time of this video going live. So if you do have more questions about this machine, you kind of want to know some of the other features by someone who actually has it in their hands, let me know down in the comments and I will do my best to answer them. All right, until next time, go make or break something in your shop. See you guys.